All right, so off the soapbox, let's talk about more regions of the brain. So the frontal lobe is important in speech, and one of the parts that are important in that is Broca's area. Sometimes Broca's area, I think I've heard, yeah, so tomato, tomato. But it's the speech center in your frontal lobe, so this is why the frontal lobe is also important in speech. And damage results in aphasia. So aphasia is something affecting speech, so an inability to speak or understand. So when you're speaking, you're transmitting information. But aphasia in general is like, is it the problem with actually transmitting that information or receiving the information? So Broca's area is one of the ones that are important involving the ability to carry, understand and speak languages. So what happens if you get a lesion to the Broca's area? Yeah, so this one is like, I have to look up where this came from, but yeah, this person had a lesion straight to that area. But the pe afflicted people, they speak in this very repetitive phrases. So what happens is that their ability to carry out complex sentences and vocabulary is, uh, is affected. And the sad thing is that they're able to understand things. They're just on the, in a, they have a reduced ability to actually articulate and speak these things. So listening may be okay, sometimes it is affected, but speaking is very difficult for people with injuries to the Broca's area. And often reading is okay. So the interesting thing is that receiving language and interpreting language is relatively unscathed, but actually able to express themselves through language. That's the part that's difficult. And here's a sad case. So what's your name? You can tell like just by her, she's understanding things. You can tell that she's recognizing the question. But, I mean, you can also see that she's very frustrated because, and she says she can't because she knows she wants, it's in her head, she wants to communicate what she wants to say, but her injury, and yeah, sad, 19 years old and having a stroke, oh my god, but yeah, she's very frustrated because she's receiving it, she's interpreting it, but she just can't transmit and put things into words. So that's one example of Broca's area. All right, so temporal lobe. So temporal lobe, moving from so yeah, the frontal lobe. As you can see, lots of slides devoted to frontal lobe because it's very important to things we take for granted, but we never really think about. But as you can see, damage to the frontal lobe can really severely impact your life. Now the temporal lobe. So things involved in the temporal lobe. Well, this is one easy way to memorize where things are. So what are these? AirPods, right? So where do you put these? Well, typically you put this right outside your external acoustic meatus, right? So notice that it's right next to the ear. So notice that the temporal lobe, this isn't co coincidental. So the temporal lobe functions, it's very important in sensory input, namely, well, auditory, just like hearing, and also visual input as well. The occipital lobe is also important in visual. So again, sometimes these functions overlap. But the temporal lobe, this is the way I remember it. Temporal lobe is important in AV, auditory and visual input. Now then there's something called the Wernicke's area. So this is different from Broca's area over here. So Wernicke's area is associated with, also, also associated with speech. Now this is very interesting. Now, she said like, what were we doing with the iPad? Did he answer that question? So he kind of, yeah, that, I love this guy. He's like, he seems so cheerful, but was he making sense? So sometimes it's called like fluent aphasia because the overall sentence structure and the cadence and rhythm of the sentence, it sounded natural and fluent, but he wasn't really making, putting words together. And I think he actually, I don't know if he said anagram or if he made up a word at the end. So sometimes we see that with lesions or damage to Wernicke's area is that they can maintain that rhythm of speech, but sometimes they don't understand the question prompt or when they string these words together, it makes no sense. It has a normal rhythm, but it doesn't make sense. Or sometimes they make up words altogether. So they are both involving languages. So compared to the Broca's aphasia where they were able to understand it, but not really communicate it. This person's communicating stuff, but they're not really understanding things. So Broca's area, again, is the frontal lobe, but Wernicke's area, this is in the temporal lobe. So this is over here compared to the Broca's area in the front. Now, this is what I like to compare and contrast. So they're both involving some sort of disability in language. So Broca's, they can uh, typically understand others, whereas Wernicke's, well, 
she just asked about the iPad, and then he, he mentioned someone named Donna and other things. I mean, I'll post a link to the clip later on. But yeah, he didn't answer the question. He was making sentences, but they weren't actually answering. And the speech is jarring and stilted in Bracca's area when you have a lesion there, and Vernicke is fluid and connected. Reading in Bracca's area is mostly intact. Again, typically, if it's not too ex extensive past the Bracca's area, they are able to receive information but not really transmit it. Whereas Wernicke's, it's really difficult to read. The vocabulary is also limited in Bracca's area due to an inability to transmit. Whereas Wernicke's, I mean, some, I think he made up a word or he said anagrams randomly at the end. So sometimes they have nonsensical vo vocabularies that they just made up.